Hello everybody, Cop Jarhead here. Uh, first real video, and not really a topic that I really want to get into, but I feel that it's still relevant. And even though a lot of people have talked about it, I feel I have a few points that I would like to put out there to to just have my views set. And the topic is course the Colorado shooting at the Aurora Theater by James Holmes. Really tragic event. Uh, prayers go out to all the victims and their families of the shooting. Really sad thing that happened. And what I want to talk about is just the shooter, why he might have done it, uh, the weapons that he used and the misinformation spread throughout the media about him and all this other liberal anti-gun BS that gets put and puts a bad rep on every other legal law-abiding gun owner out there. Uh, we all know the shooter James Holmes, um, obvious psychopath, I don't care what you say. Um, personally, I think that the cops should have just shot him on the spot. They, saw, they see a man with a gun all dressed up in tactical gear. And you and and they know what's going on. They know that there's a mass shooting going on. And personally, I don't care if the guy surrendered. I would have shot him right between the eyes. As far as a fair and legal trial goes, I think that if you go back in time and ask the founding fathers about a fair and legal trial by your peers, I don't think they included mass murderers in that category. Maybe just regular run the mill criminals, but not mass murderers or uh, serial killers and people like that. If, if, if it were me, I would like to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner, and I would just release them to the dogs. Um, them being the family members and the other victims of the theater shooting and just have your way with them and I'm not talking about shooting them in the head or beating them up because that's just too nice too easy I would what comes to mind is that uh, movie Law Abiding Citizen where the main character takes the guy that killed his wife and daughter in front of him dopes him up so that he doesn't fall asleep and still feels pain and then just cut him up bit by bit. But that's just me. I mean, what this guy did was horrific and the fact that he might just plead insanity and he will be in an insane ward for the rest of his life or just in a maximum security prison while we have to pay for his bills is just... I, I feel that he's just getting away with it. Moving on, uh, the guns that he used. He used a Remington 870 12-gauge shotgun, a Glock 40 caliber. All right, I've heard people say Glock 40 millimeter. Um, that's just idiotic because a 40 millimeter basically means that the bullet is four centimeters in diameter. Your the average middle finger is three inches. So that's a little bit under four centimeters. So you could kind of guess how big and ridiculous that sounds. So no, it was just a Glock 40 caliber, which is a little bit bigger than a nine mil. It's not some special cop killing round, armor piercing, whatever. And of course, the main gun that everyone's talking about is the AR-15 assault rifle with a hundred round drum magazine and no it is not a clip regular magazines are not clips a clip feeds a magazine please get it right it's really annoying you sound ignorant if you say clip if you're not talking about an actual clip AR-15 semi-automatic he did not have an assault rifle unless he was willing to pay over twenty thousand dollars for the registered lower and wait about eight months for the ATF to approve his papers to get it. I doubt he did that. He walked into a gun store, got all his guns illegally, 
AR-15 semi-automatic, just like this one. This is a semi-automatic AR-15. AR does not stand for assault rifle, it stands for Armalite, which was the first company that produced the AR-15 style weapons. We all know that Eugene Stoner designed the, the pattern for this rifle, and Armalite was, I believe, the first contract to get it from Stoner, and they produced it. Hence, AR-15. M16 is a fully automatic weapon. M4s are fully automatic weapons. Those are the military designations. He did not have an M16. He did not have an M4. He had an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, which is no different from, say, a Ruger Mini-14, which is also semi-automatic, but it is a sporter rifle. Uh, people say that we should control these guns. Um, I really don't see a need for controlling those type of weapons because they're hardly ever used in crimes. And I mean, if you look at all the gun owners, it, shootings like this are such a small percentage that it doesn't even matter. And even if you banned them, which they did from 94 to 2004 in the Clinton's, in the Clinton era assault weapon ban, it did not reduce crime. Nothing happened at all because they're never used in the commission of a crime. The only other time I could think of that an actual assault rifle was used in the commission of the crime was the North Hollywood shootout at the Bank of America in the early 90s using AK-47. So those were fully automatic. And remember the guys that were armored from head to toe full on and were on the a ton of barbiturates, so they couldn't feel anything. But the great thing about that day, the only two people that died were the two gunmen. So a lot of people got injured, but no one else died. So even then, even there, automatic weapons were not as lethal as a semi automatic. Moving on, uh, the body armor. You People say that he was wearing body armor. Uh, what he was probably wearing was a Kevlar vest. It's cheaper. He was probably expecting maybe to have a shootout with cops or a shootout with someone carrying a gun, which is why he was wearing the body armor. It was probably just a Kevlar vest. Um, yes, you can buy them. Yes, they are illegal. No, I don't think they should be illegal because say you were someone in that theater and I mean this is going out out there like it, it's almost far-fetched to even think about it but let's say you're just a regular law-abiding citizen who carries or also decides to wear body armor if you're in that situation and you decide to get up and engage homes in a shootout you also would have been protected but that's a whole different topic for a whole different video the 100 round drum magazine. People say that we should ban high capacity magazines, such as 30 round mags. 30 round mags for an AR-15 is a standard capacity magazine. The standard capacity magazine is a magazine that holds a number of rounds appropriate for that weapon system. If I have a 1911, which I do, such as Springfield TRP operator. This has a 10 round high capacity magazine. It's high capacity because 1911s are designed for seven rounds or eight rounds. And those two extra rounds make it a higher capacity magazine for the 1911 system. A Glock 17 holds, I believe, 18 rounds of nine millimeter. That is a standard capacity magazine for that weapon system. The 33 and 31, 31 round Glock magazines, those are high capacity for that system. This is a 30 round magazine. If you were to put 5.56, I have 6.8, it holds 25 rounds. Standard capacity 
magazine for my weapon system. So yeah, he did have a high capacity magazine, I'm not arguing the fact that he didn't. Should we ban them? No. Why do I say that? If he were to have four 30 round mags, or 10 10 round mags, or however many 5 round mags that would equate to 100, I'm, I'm a little tired right now. I haven't really eaten anything yet, so my math is kind of slow. It would have made no difference. He would have gotten the same number of shots off in roughly the same amount of time if he was fast enough to reload, and he was in control, so he had nothing to worry about. He was the big guy with the big gun. Okay, maybe it's not big, but he was the guy with the gun in the theater. Everyone else was running. He had all the time in the world to quickly switch the magazine and continue shooting whether it was a 5-round mag, a 10-round mag, a 30-round mag, or a 100-round beta mag, okay? It would have made no difference. Um, for just regular people to have a 100-round magazine, it means they could have a little, bit, a little bit more fun at the range. They don't have to reload. Um, it could be more convenient, I guess. They are expensive, so not everybody really has them. Um, as far as crazy max shooters go, it makes it more convenient for them, yes, but again, the last time that a high capacity magazine was used was the North Hollywood shooting that I could think of. They had 75 round drum mags for the AK-47 rifle. So moving on from that, no, I don't think they should be banned um, or regulated. I don't think you should have a special permit to get them and it would make absolutely no difference if they were banned. All right, so moving on. He had about, we're gonna talk about the ammo now. He had six or 8,000 rounds. I forget the official number, but it doesn't matter once you get that high. Um, he had that, many, that much ammo and he bought it all online. Now everyone's immediately saying, why do you need 6,000 rounds of ammunition? Why do you need to be able to get them online? All right. Well, for one thing, I can think of competition shooters. They go through easily, easily over 20,000 rounds a month or two just to train. All right. Gun stores don't hold that much ammunition of, let alone of one caliber. You can get them online, you can get them cheaper, and have them delivered, and you go out, practice, whatever. As far as regular civilians go, I don't know, maybe you just want to stockpile, maybe you just like going out there shooting a lot. It, it's like saying, why do you need so much spare gasoline for your car, all right? It, it, it really is because we have to stop looking at guns as killing machines. They're just another tool. Anything out here in this world can be used to kill someone, all right? If you look at cars, you look at alcohol, you look at a screwdriver, you look at a hammer, all of those things, etc., can be used as a weapon to kill someone, all right? Ammo feeds a gun, ammo is the thing that is shot out of the gun and kills someone, but it's not something that should be really looked at to be regulated at such large amounts of stockpiling. Hundreds of thousands of people do it every single day, every single month, every single year to go out and shoot and have fun, all right? At one point, I had over a thousand rounds. Doesn't mean I'm a psycho. No, I'm not. I just had them. I went out. I already used them all at the range. I'm trying to get more, but money's tight because of the economy. Should we ban internet sales? No. Like I said, that's the only place that I could get it that have them available. 
Alright, and in this economy, do you really want to shut down